Okay, now pretty uh, similarly, we're going to talk about consecutive even and consecutive odd integers. Now there's going to be a similarity here that I want you to see um, that's uh, kind of important. Um, and that is, look, if we're dealing with consecutive even, I'm looking for one even number right after another. So this looks like um, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, or maybe 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 22, 24, 26, any even number right after each other, um, notice that there's no breaks. Consecutive odd is the exact same way. So consecutive odd are going to be things like 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, etc. Well, kind of like what we did up here when we were dealing with uh, consecutive integers, I want us to see what happens here. If I go from, let's say, 2 to 4. Now remember, n is always my starting point. So from 2 to 4, I'm going to add 2. Okay. And then from 2 to 6, what am I going to add? Well, 2 plus 4 gives me 6, so I get plus 4 whenever I go to the second number in the sequence. And then I'm going to go from 2 to 8, well that's going to give me plus 6. So I'm jumping by 2 every time because what I'm doing is anytime I, if I were to add 1 I'd get to an odd number, if I add 2 I get to an even. So all I'm doing is I'm jumping one number to get to the next. So look what happens when I get to my 3, 5, 7, 9 here, and you may already be able to see it. If I go from 3 to 5, what am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add 2. If I go to from 3 to 7, what am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add 4. And then, if I go from 3 to 9, what am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add 6. Notice that they're the exact same pattern, whether you're consecutive, even, and consecutive odd, and that's what I want to show you, is that no matter if I'm dealing with even or odd, Either way, I'm going to use the same formula. And that formula is going to be n for the first number, n plus 2 for the second number, n plus 3 for, I'm sorry, n plus 4 for the third number, and so on and so forth. If I were to go 4, it would be n plus 6, n plus 8. I'm going to, and that works for either consecutive odd or consecutive even. So let's work a problem. Okay, so here's my problem. We want the sum of three consecutive odd integers. Well, we want odd, so we know we want that n plus 2, n plus 4, and we want three of them. So remember, we start with our n. That's where we start any sequence. And then we do n plus 2. And then we jump from there to n plus 4. Now that gives me 1, 2, 3 integers, and the sum of those integers is 225. So that's 225. I'm dealing with sum, so I need to add. And we combine our like terms, n plus n plus n, that's going to give me my 3n. 2 plus 4 gives me 6, and that's going to equal 225. Now, solving that, system, that, that linear equation, I need to subtract 6 from both sides. Well, that's going to give me that uh, 3n is equal to um, 219. Now, I know 3 is going to divide this, just a little extra tidbit. I know 3 divides this because 9 plus 1 gives me 10, 10 plus 2 gives me 12, and I know 3 divides 12, so I know it's going to divide evenly. So going ahead and doing this division, I get 3n is equal to 219 divided by 3 gives me that n is actually equal to 73. Now, I need n plus 2, so n plus 2 is my second number, that's going to be 75, and then n plus 4 is going to give me 77. Note that these are three consecutive 
odd integers. If you had come up with an even integer in this list, uh, it would have been incorrect. So that's, uh, that's the sum of three consecutive odd integers. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the sum of three consecutive even integers. Uh, since it is even, we are dealing with the n plus two, n plus four um, sequence. Uh, but now I want us to be careful because we're equaling to a negative number here. So, again, we want our n, that's our start, then we want n plus two, and then after that we want our n plus four. That gives me my evens. We're going to equal that to a negative 120, and we're dealing with the sum, so we want pluses. So here's, again, remember this is our first, this is our second number, and this is our third number. So n plus n plus n, that's going to give me 3n. 2 plus 4 gives me 6, and that's going to equal negative 120. Solving this, we subtract 6 from both sides. Now, I've got two negatives, so since I've got two negatives, then it's going to actually add the two together, keep the sign, so that's going to be negative 126. Dividing by 3 on both sides, I know that 3 will divide 12 four times, and 3 will divide 6 two times, so that's going to be n is equal to negative 42. Well, that's what my n is. Now, I want you to be careful because it's really, really tempting to say, oh, well, n plus 2 then will be negative 44, negative 46, and that's my answer. But I want you to be careful because we know that n is negative 42, but now we need to deal with n plus 2, which n plus 2 is going to equal negative 42 plus 2. Well, notice that my signs are different, and when my signs are different, I actually have to subtract. So that's going to be uh, negative 42 plus 2. That's actually going to give me negative 40. Remember that um, the actually the smaller the number uh, in the negative means that it's larger because if I owe you $40, I owe you less than if I owed you $42. I'm bigger in debt uh, with 42. So now the last one. This is going to be n plus 4, which is going to be negative 42 plus 4. which is going to jump me to 38 negative, so negative 38. So be careful when you're dealing with these. Always check, make sure that they add up to give me the right, the right number in the end. Okay, that will